Hey everyone, welcome to another Mass Transit bus stop. We're doing something different today. We actually have a third party. We have a guest. So in addition to Drew, who's normally with us, we also have Breck joining us. Breck is the author of a website called Smasher, and that's, you know, in the typical .NET fashion. You know, it's smash with a big R on the end. So, you know, it's got that... Uh, definite feel of modernness, you know, because, you know, we've got things like Mediator <laughs> and everything, so, you know, it's good to see. Um, so, yeah, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Brecht? Uh, I'm uh, uh, Brecht Havenis. I am from uh, Belgium. I am the uh, developer of uh, Smasher. Um, in my daily life, I'm a full-stack Angular.net uh, developer. Um, and what I'm building is is a, a pretty much a Reddit alternative. Uh, it has all the same features like uh, communities, posts, comments, uh, upvoting, downvoting, um, and it's it's the the main goal of of Smasher to provide uh, an alternative platform for a market that is currently dominated by one single big player. Interesting. I mean, I've used Reddit for years. I mean, it's. <laughs> you know, I think what did we use before that? Was it what was the site that it killed? Slash dot? Was that it? I can't remember. Dig. 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 That's right. I forgot about Dig. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I found the site. I can't remember what I was looking through, but um, what well, I think what caught my eye is so I I troll Twitter, aka X, for any time people post mass transit, and most of the time it's about people complaining about public transportation in some <laughs> other country. Because yeah. apparently it, it assumes that I meant mass space transit. Yeah, it's it's a funny thing about when you pick one of the most common search words on the planet. Um, but then I saw that the site was using it for the back end, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of bring you on and kind of open it up of like someone who's actually using mass transit, especially in kind of a kind of a startup approach, kind of, you know, yeah. what what you know, find out what your experience has been, what you like about it, what's, you know, what, what, you know, you might not like about it. I'm, I'm open to all feedback. Feedback is good. And, uh, just kind of see what there, I thought it would be kind of interesting to see. So first off, um, you mentioned, you know, your day job and the Smasher. Can you give us kind of a brief view of like how you're using mass transit to make Smasher, you know, I guess asynchronous and, and all that fun stuff and go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the big feature that I use it for is for, um, well, in Smasher, you can create three kinds of posts. You can create a text post, an image post, and a link post. And um, when you create a link post, so you, you paste in the URL of a uh, page, it will um, call a REST API, and that REST API will first create the post, post track in the SQL database. And then it will send a uh, request to uh, mass trends rabbit of queue a consumer will pick that up and it will then enrich that post with um, information that it downloaded from that url so the the consumer will download for example from that page the uh, open graph image uh, which the thumbnail that is displayed in the post um, and it will you know it will update that post in the database and now, the interesting part about that is if this happens within a five second timeout, um, then it will immediately return the result. The REST API it will return the post ID, and the user gets to see his newly created post page with the thumbnail. Um, and also because Mass Transit allows a, a, a timeout to be set, now if it exceeds the, the five second timeout, it will um, also redirect the user to its newly created. Uh, post page um, but you will not have to you will not have a thumbnail visible yet um, no after a while the user can refresh their page and they can uh, see if the if the thumbnail is already there um, and uh, you know also a very interesting part of that is if you have mass trends it's very uh, scalable for the future so if you would have a bit more traction on the website you would be able to um, introduce more consumers running in currently in, in dock containers. They can pick up a message from the uh, bus and um, they can divide the load. So it's it's future proof that it can, you know, it's the, for with more users, it can handle that that load to download the information from the external website. Um, so it's for the user, it's a very smooth experience. And um, uh, 
yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a scalable uh, bridge feature. Awesome. I heard a couple of things in there that I want to see. So I get these, you know, obviously RabbitMQ is the most wide used transport with mass transit. Azure Service Bus is a, is a second. And then, you know, Azure, or I'm sorry, Amazon SQS is a third. Um, I'm curious, in your experiences with RabbitMQ, and you mentioned a Docker container, how are you deploying this application today? I mean, I, I'm sure it's running in the cloud. What isn't these days? But like, are you deploying it in Kubernetes? Are you deploying it using container apps? What's your, what's your model in that perspective of how you're using that? I'm currently deploying it user uh, using Azure. Uh, it is uh, what's actually just now currently is just a, 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 a PowerShell script with a with a Azure CLI commands in it, just to quick, quickly get it up and running. Um, but uh, it is um, running on Azure container apps. Um, because I tried different kind of uh, Azure services that were available, and this was the one that kind of worked for it. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Azure container apps is great. How are you running RabbitMQ? Are you deploying that as a container, or are you using some other solution um it is it is a uh, the mass transit rabbit and q container oh okay so that, you're just that running that being, yeah and locally it's a doc compose with um you know you got the rabbit uh, mass transit rabbit and q in there you got a uh, api um uh, container you got a worker container just one now which has the the consumer in it of mass transit um you got the uh, stack and uh you got Forgot the last one, another container, but you know something else. Uh, you got the uh, Azure uh, storage. Uh, you get Azureite, the storage uh, emulator. Hmm. Uh, we test the run uh, locally. Um, and so, um, yeah, RabbitMQ is running master in a uh, container, um, and it's the the, the mass transit RabbitMQ uh, that you guys provide. Nice, awesome. Yeah, it's what a uh, question that comes up a lot, especially when people are trying to deploy, you know, systems. Especially when you talk about linear scalability and horizontal scaling. I think one of the things, you know, I've seen people do it multiple ways, where they they will create a single like broker, or they'll have a broker cluster, or they'll use like Cloud AMQP to set up a cluster for them and run it. And what's nice about that is they've mastered the clustering thing. I mean, doing it yourself is a pain, you know, and Cloud AMQP isn't super expensive. Mm -hmm. The, um, But what's interesting is, you know, that again becomes a central point of scaling limitations if everything is going through that. And a lot of applications actually need all the messages to be in a single broker fabric. But one of the customers of Mass Transit that I've worked with for quite a while, they actually scale everything as like a set of pods that run together. So when you think about an a completely self-contained application, it has its own database, it has its own so it has Postgres, it has RabbitMQ, and it has the API and a huge list of routing slip services. So they have dozens of activities that are running that execute based on dynamic data coming into the system. And to get those scaling benefits, they actually run a complete copy of the of the system multiple times in Kubernetes. And so then when an API request comes in, that hits the Kubernetes load balancer. It just picks one of the ones to go to and goes there and processes it because it's a large ingest-based system. And it's it's using requests. So the system comes in, makes an HTTP request, and within a second gets an HTTP response. Um, but it's doing that all from one API endpoint. So it it's stateless in that respect, but it's also stateful because all of those individual replicas are self-contained. So it's it's kind of interesting that they were able to scale without any sort of single point of failure bottleneck. And then all of the data from those systems then replicates out to other databases that then gets pulled into a data lake for all the backend processing. But you know, in in a lot of cases, depending upon the volume, having a single broker works great, uh, especially for the volume that most have. But when you start thinking about scaling, there's always that opportunity of, well, we just need this background processing. There's no output other than updating the core system. So why do we not? Why couldn't we just scale out the brokers if it isn't sufficient? So it's interesting to think about those different approaches there. So let me jump to the other question. So developer experience, what has been your developer? It sounds like, are you the only developer on the project? I'm currently the only developer uh, on the on the project. Um, I have uh, been a developer for 
almost 20 years in uh, .NET. You know, started off in uh, Cube Basic, uh, then uh, Visual Basic uh, 4, 5, 6, .NET, and then continued, you know, all the way to, to .NET Core 8. Uh, it's currently running in .NET Core 8. Um, so, and the front end is Angular. Um, and uh, yeah, currently the only developer on it is me, but, you know, maybe if there is some more traction uh, going on in the future, then we will expand on that. And what's the developer experience been? I mean, obviously, since it's you, you kind of know where every line of code is. You know, I feel I feel yeah. that way about mass transit sometimes. It's like, I, I know people are like, how do you know where that code is? It's like, well, I've touched most of the code within the last couple of years. So it's especially with the version 8 rewrite. I mean, I think I went through every line of code in mass transit. So it's like, I kind of remember where stuff is. But how have you found picking up like the features and capabilities of mass transit? in that context. I found it, I found it actually quite uh, easy to use. Um, you know, the thing about what I was looking for is a, a product that is kind of like, you know, mature. It has to uh, not be, it has to be recently updated. You know, if I, I check for something that I would use, for example, in, in GitHub, I would check like, okay, is it, is it recently updated? It's not like a project that still works, but it has been updated two years ago. So that was already a good sign. And then I dive into the, the documentation and tried it out a bit. It has a little bit of a small learning curve, uh, not that much actually. You know, once you get the hang of it, it's like okay, you know, it's it's not that not that difficult. Um, quite easy to implement. You know, uh, clean code code also kind of kind of like you know it fits in, in the in the in the way that I also code. Um, and uh, you know what I like about it is that it's abstracts away all the complexity of of RabbitMQ. Um, so. You know, you 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 only depend on you know on, on on the coding side on you know one third party component which hides away the complexity, and then it's in the future possible to know if there is more need for you know for example a different kind of uh, message transport to switch it out to to maybe uh, Azure Server Cloud in this case or to to uh, uh, Amazon SQS. Um, so it's also one of the reasons why why I chose Mass Transit um, to to easily, you know, swap out into higher complexities. And, uh, you know, my overall experience was, was very good, very smooth. A um, little small learning curve, but uh, still, once, you know, once you're through that, it's very, very enjoyable. And documentation was, was very good to help go through that learning curve. Uh, I went into the, the RabbitMQ, I think it's like a quick start or something about it, went through that, um, and then just went, uh, yeah, like uh, very easy. Yeah, the quick starts. You can thank Drew for those. He recorded all of them. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, Not any questions problem. from you? What's on your mind? So I'd be curious for us to hear what the learning curve was for you. Like, mm -hmm. where where was there maybe some stumbles that we, you know, what can we learn? So that's well, the first learning, one. The learning curve was more that it was not that comfortable yet with uh, you know, message brokers. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's more like finger out, like okay, like what does this thing do? Um, uh, you know, is it you know kind of like okay, this this publishes something. You know, it, it, it broadcasts it, and you don't get a response, for example, or this is a, it's a request response kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, it's more figure out how technically, like how would that you know message broker thing work? How can it apply to my situation? Is it what I what I want it to do? Um, so, uh, but you know, the documentation is very, very helpful with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, overall very, very good experience. I also had, uh, not to remember a small issue, but with, with, uh, trying to figure out the, uh, mass transit host, what if you figure that on Azure, I was kind of like, should I have to use the, the fully qualified domain name? Do I have to use the, the container name? There was a, a bit of diving into the, the, the logging of the Azure uh, uh, containers there, but actually, you know, like, I see the, the messages come in and it's, uh, it's not okay. the right. No, that No, that makes plenty of sense. So just, it was your first time really working with the message broker as a concept, and how do I fit that into my, my mental model coming yeah. from a, a largely database-oriented pro development? environment yeah yes yes right on 
So, t so tell me, what are your next what are your next steps for Smasher? I mean, is this? I mean, it sounds like it's a side project. You said you had a day job, so you know something's paying the bills. I mean, is there plans to try to try to t turn this into the next Reddit? Is this just kind of a a side thing? What are your goals for that? Uh, well, the initial goal is to attract some more users and to to uh, you know get a feedback from those users to 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 steer development a bit. Um, see where it goes from there of course it's the the ultimate goal to provide a uh, very uh, you know sizable value uh, viable uh, alternative to reddit um just to have a second player pretty much in the market reddit controls a bit too much of that you know social uh, news aggregation space um i think it's good to have a bit of a second player in it which is you know a sizable player that's the goal it's a it's a difficult goal, but you know we gotta gotta try and see where it where it goes and try our best. Yeah. Well, I hope it goes well for you. I mean, I checked the site out a little bit, and it's definitely off to a start. So, and it's cool that it uses mass transit. Yeah. So it makes me <laughs> want to use it more. So. <laughs> Drew, any last thoughts? Uh, if you could ask for any feature in mass transit, what would it be? Oh. That's a that's a good question. Um, I don't know if I can have a, have a okay. comment on that. Yeah, yeah. If it's not the top of the dome, that's okay. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you joining us today. This is kind of a new twist. We hope to have more people on the show in the future. Um, Drew, thanks for getting up on the Monday morning and starting off the week with a little chat. And uh, if you happen to watch this or in the London area, I'm going to be speaking at NDC London later this week. But if you're nearby and want to say hey, just uh, reach out. I'm pretty much available on all the social networks. If you can find me and you know, you've said you owe me a pint, well, I'm going to come to collect. So thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, again, the site is smasher.com and uh, we'll catch you on the next bus stop.